Hey guys, it's Jeff and today we're talking about iOS 13.4 Developer Beta 2. Now this is a very important update because as I've said previously in many videos, iOS 13.4 might be the last official version of iOS 13 that we see for this year. Now we might get some subsequential updates like iOS 13.4.1, uh, kind of handling security updates in the near future, uh, should there be any security patches that need to be made. But for the most part, iOS 13.4 will be the last major version released this year for iOS 13. And then we'll move over to iOS 14. Now, with that said, we have beta two of iOS 13.4. Last week or two weeks ago, we saw iOS 13.4 developer beta one. That was very lackluster. We really, really didn't see much. The kind of like highlight feature of that update was new Memoji stickers. Not really that exciting. So now we're on to beta two. We're still looking for those new features that we were looking for in the first developer beta. And of course there was a lot of performance issues with the first developer beta of iOS 13.4. So we'll of course be checking back on that as well. So we're currently getting installed iOS 13.4 developer beta two onto the iPhone 11 Pro Max here. Let's go ahead and check out some of the new features and changes that have been brought to this update. Okay guys, so this was our update page for iOS 13.4 developer beta two. As you can see, the total update size was just around 460 gigabytes. And this is specifically for my iPhone 11 Pro Max. So if you have a different device and the uh, kind of like build is a little bit lighter than this one, maybe it's like 300 uh, or 360 megabytes, that is likely just because you have a different phone than I do. Okay, so let's go into the settings app and get a little bit more information about this update. If we go to general, then about, you can obviously see that the software version has remained the same, iOS 13.4, but the build number has changed to 17E5233G. Now that G at the end of the build number does indicate uh, that basically there is a less stable build on file here than what we would like to see. So if it were like an A, B, or C at the end of the build number, uh, basically that would be the most stable builds and then on from there. So because this still has a G at the end of the build number, I do recommend that you guys do not update to uh, this update because it is less stable and you might be experiencing bugs, some issues with app compatibility. I know in beta one, I was experiencing a lot of issues with Instagram specifically, kind of loading data from that and also having uh, some issues with camera compatibility with Instagram as well. So guys, yeah, do it your own risk as far as updating, but just wanted to share that information with you guys. Now let's go farther down here into the menu and check out modem firmware. The modem firmware has changed to 1.05.25. That is a major, major update over what we were seeing before in beta one. So obviously Apple wanted to sure some things up with issues, maybe uh, resolving uh, like LTE issues or anything like that. Uh, so the modem firmware has in fact been updated. Now, one other thing in the settings app I wanted to show you that was actually very important to me is in the battery menu. If you go into the battery menu, then into battery health, my maximum capacity or my battery health has always been 100%. Now it has gone down to 99% and that is likely just because of a recalculation due to this update. I have had the phone since day one um, of release, so I do expect the battery health to go down pretty steadily from there, but I have been maintaining really, really good battery health so far, and it just seems that with this update, there's been a recalculation, and that has dropped me down a percentage point. Now, if you see that maximum capacity go down like three, four percent at a time with updates, that is likely just a bug, but if you go ahead and update to this latest beta, and maybe you see a recalculated score there and it kind of like pisses you off or makes you nervous that is just a simple recalculation what you were seeing before likely wasn't that accurate and with this update they just recalculated your battery health and gave you the more accurate number um, of the two that you were seeing now moving on to any new features you really have to take a look at the uh, kind of like build notes that apple has released if you take a look at the build notes you can see that there's not really too many new features they're kind of all background features that have been added um, but kind of like the more notable new features um, has come to the keyboard so quicktype now supports um, predictive input for arabic um, it now supports a live conversion for japanese and chinese and then also supports swiss german layout 
for a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So those are kind of the new features that have been added. I've been going and kind of searching through iOS 13.4 developer beta 2, really haven't found anything new within this update. Um, it's been pretty lackluster. I will update you guys if I find anything new, but so far everything seems to be just as it was in the first developer beta. Um, there's no new uh, Memoji stickers or more added Memoji stickers. Everything kind of looks the same. Same. So while this is really disappointing, it seems that Apple is just focusing more on uh, kind of like fixing the bugs that were present in beta one, and then maybe uh, shoring up some items that, um, you know, they didn't really take care of in iOS 13.3. So if you go throughout this update, you might see, you might be disappointed in the fact that there aren't any, you know, uh, like headline new features. Um, but overall, the experience is still pretty good here going throughout this update. You do have that new mode and firmware and you do have um, just a few things going on in the background, which improves the overall performance of iOS 13.4. Now, one thing that I did notice going into the mail app for iOS 13.4 developer beta two is there has been further revision to uh, the toolbar at the bottom. So in the Apple stock mail app, they have revised the toolbar again. Uh, there was a flag at the bottom right-hand corner uh, previously in beta one, and now they have switched that to the compose button, but that's likely the biggest change that we'll find so far here in beta two. Okay guys, so that was what is new and some of the changes that have been made in iOS 13.4 developer beta two. If you have any uh, new features or changes that you didn't see in this video and you just want to comment those in the comment section down below, please feel free to do so. I'll get back to those and check on those as soon as I can. But let's move on to speed and performance because that is a major topic when it comes to iOS uh, updates. Speed and performance has not really been affected here in beta two. I was seeing a lot of bugs and a lot of issues surrounding the first developer beta of iOS 13.4. It was very alarming. I told people maybe hold off on this update and go to the second developer beta should that be better. And unfortunately, I can't really say that there's too much of an improvement on those bugs. There's still bugs here and there. Some of the same bugs that we're seeing in beta one are still present in beta two. So if you guys are looking for an update, maybe you're looking to gain speed and performance, I wouldn't say you're necessarily getting that here. On the raw benchmarks of speed and performance, we're not really seeing much of an update, but on actual use, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown because there are still bugs present in this update. So if you're just looking at speed and performance, technically it has not gone down, but in reality, it has just because there's so many bugs within these first two developer betas. Now, as far as battery life, I did touch up on uh, kind of like my live demo of beta two that my battery percentage or battery health has gone down. That is again, just a recalculation of how battery health is calculated. And it just so happens to come with an update. Now, if you're seeing that drop like many percentage marks, like maybe two, 3% at a time, that might be an error. But in cases like mine, we're going from 100 to 99. And I've had this device since day one of release. It's likely just readjusting and it is time to see kind of a small drop in percentage for battery health. But as far as battery life as a whole, battery life is still very, very good. I was just talking to a couple of other people the other day. They were saying specifically with the newer devices that have those new chips inside that battery life is doing really Really, really great. Now, if you own an older device like an iPhone 8, 8 Plus, those devices are still doing really well with battery life, uh, especially since in the past with like iOS 11 and iOS 12, we saw a huge drop off in battery life with older devices. We're not seeing that now in iOS 13, which is really nice to see. So battery life is still doing well in iOS 13.4 developer beta two. So guys, that is the update as a whole. Uh, iOS 13.4 developer beta two. If you have any comments, questions, or anything like that, please leave those in the comments comment section down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Before you go though, if you like today's video, definitely leave a like on the video. Also, what really helps us out if you get subscribed and hit that notification bell button, that will give you updates as soon as any content is released. If you want to stay up to date with iOS updates, 
that's cool. If you want to see product reviews, we have a couple of those coming up, especially tomorrow. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. So guys, again, thank you for watching this video and hopefully we'll be catching you guys in some upcoming content. This video is sponsored by MacPod, the creators of Clean My Mac X. This is a program that I use almost every day to clean up junk files, protect my Mac from malware, and speed up my Mac to work like it did from day one. There's also a ton of other tools that you get with this program without any hassle whatsoever. So if you want to start the program I use for my Mac, check out the link down below to see more info and also to download it today.